was all Martin Rice. Hello again, my friends, and you are my friends, and welcome to this, another special talking to. We've had Jason DeVos, we've had Craig Forrest, Terry Butcher, the owners, Mark Detmer, Burke Bakai, but tonight, another special one coming your way. Uh, obviously, a legend. I, I chose two goals there, guys, for the intro, but I could, in theory, in, no, not theory, in practice, I could have chosen a whole host. Did Martin ever score a scuffed, a scuffed goal, do you think? He scored a scuffed goal against Charlton away. I, I couldn't <laughs> find it. It was all a beauty. The Every one. single one. Yeah, the 3-1 game, yeah. Every single one. So we're here to obviously discuss uh, and, and talk to Martin Royster this evening. So please do get your, your comments into our live chat. I'll try and collect as many questions as I can throughout the course of the show. And, and any that aren't put to him... Uh, we'll put, and put to him towards the end of the show. And of course, you can come on if you're a Ko-Fi member. The link will be available to you to, to ask him directly. Um, but that has to be—you have to be a Ko-Fi or YouTube member to do so. You can become one of those just by clicking the link now in the chat. I'm excited, so I'm going to sit here, look pretty on camera, he says, uh, <laughs> and collect the collect the questions. And I'm looking forward to hearing what what Martin's got to say. I'll let yeah. you to introduce him, Rich. You're you're clearly the super fan among us because you've got the bucket hat, and any time anyone wears a bucket hat, they're I've got, the super fan. I've got so. red and white fry axe. <laughs> I've got the I've bucket got hat from Wembley. I've got the Dutch shirt, and uh, I think like everybody in the chat and, and Matt and yourself, we, we're really looking forward to having Martin on and um, yeah, talking too. to him about his, his time at town, aren't we? Absolutely, it's be great. Roy, yeah. Roy Clark, Dutch players always look comfortable on the ball, and how we could do with somebody such as Martin's comfortableness on the ball I and mean, the set pieces like the, the goal I showed there against Bradford how we could have done with that on Saturday as it were yeah that's one of the games I always hark back to sometimes that he, he scored twice we win 3-1 we're on the cusp of the Champions League it was like one of those I feel like it was just back in the big time and it kind of was encompassed by that game I feel and those well, goals as yeah. the commentator said it's always Martin Royster so introduce him and I'll bring him on and then we can get cracking well, Rich so, Martin played 114 games for town, uh, 19 goals. Uh, obviously, everybody remembers his debut against Fulham at Portman Road when he came off the bench, scored the winner. Then there was obviously, we'll, look, we'll talk about the two games in the playoffs, obviously against Bolton, and he got the winning goal. And I, I remember running on the pitch that night. And obviously, the goal at Wembley, then the Premier League. Welcome to Talking Town to the Dutch maestro, Martin Reusser. Yes, a very good evening, and uh, it's been an absolute uh, pleasure to be on your show. Um, actually, this weekend I was in Ipswich, and it was quite a coincidence. So I saw uh, saw a few friends uh, lately. Now, of course, it was nice to be in, at Portsmouth Road again. Unfortunately, it was uh, nil-nil against uh, Portsmouth, of course. But anyway, it's nice to be on the show. Thank you. You've got you've got fond memories of Portsmouth. I remember you scoring in that three-nil. Going back a few years now. Yeah, I remember. I was at was at home and um, was a, was a, a quite quite good goal. I heard you talking that I, I was was scoring uh, cracking goals, but I remember <laughs> that goal against Charlton that was pretty uh, awful. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> they all count. <laughs> no, but I mean, it was yeah, it was good again uh, to be at Portman Road and, and especially those memories that were coming back. So uh, no, it's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What and what did you make of the game? Well, you've you've come back to see Ipswich in now the third tier. But what did yeah. you make of Ipswich and, and the new manager Kieran McKenna? What did you make of it all Saturday? It's, it's quite difficult because you know you don't see them play uh, quite often, and especially yeah. in Holland, you only show the Premier League. Uh, so to judge them uh, on, on on one game, that's that's pretty harsh. Yeah, but uh, in in in. In little words, they're a solid union, but I missed a little bit uh, the quality at the final third. Uh, some exceptional players, uh, people which can create something, uh, but in general, it looked like a decent side. But uh, bearing in mind that it was only uh, uh, first division, uh, so and of course. All the fans, but also the club, they are they are looking back to the Premier League. But yeah, it's it's it's, it's not being easy to come back. Um, so in a nutshell, that that was my opinion about the game. 
That's probably why we're ninth, Martin, in, in the third tier. Because, <laughs> yeah. like you say, the, the quality yeah. at the top yeah. end of the pitch, and we could do with someone like yourself there, you know. No, I, I, I won't recommend uh, to put my boots anymore because uh, that's <laughs> I'm not the old uh, Royster anymore from uh, 20 years or so ago. But um, what, what what the good thing was about about being at Portman Road, I was really surprised that there were 27,000 people in the stadium who were still supporting the Blues and still uh, supporting the team. Uh, so maybe with the new uh, owners who are coming in, uh, Mark Ashton, the new CEO, uh, who, who brings a lot of money, hopefully within a few years, uh, yeah, they, they will get back in, uh, in in the Premier League. But I've been mean, saying that for, for at least four or five years already. <laughs> yeah, well, that's longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But you, the good thing is that my my, my legacy is still 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 running, uh, even become bigger. Uh, but but that that's not the case because uh, I hopefully really, especially for the fans and for the town and and for the club, it's it's hopefully uh, they they will come back within uh, three, four, five years. I hope so. Did you did you, did you presumably you you met Ashton before the game, Martin, and had a good yeah. chat with him? Was you impressed with him? Yeah, I mean. Um, we had a little chat and also with uh, the, the American owner. Uh, so we had a pre-dinner and also on, on Friday evening, there was a, we had a dinner with, with some teammates and he was there as well. Uh, so in general, uh, I just spoke to him uh, briefly uh, and I said to him, listen, uh, wherever in the future I can help uh, in players or whatever, um, I'm help. Yeah, I'm willing to help. Um, but he, he looked like a decent guy who uh, has a genuine feeling for, for the club. Yeah, yeah. Because we've got a rich history, haven't we, of Dutch players? Because obviously we had uh, Tyson and Muren. And, and yeah. obviously Romeo Zondervan, he he um, recommended you to town when you were playing for Ajax back in um, 2000. I think it was March you were playing for the reserves, weren't you? Yeah, well, it was not all, it was also a coincidence. I called uh, I called Romeo today, and I said to him, uh, "Where were you this uh, this weekend? Because I missed you." <laughs> and and he said, "Oh, well, I, I'm 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 really disappointed because if I knew you were coming, I I, I would have been been there as well." Uh, but he, he was a scout uh, at that time for uh, for town, and 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 fortunately he uh, he saw me playing in reserves, and uh, at that time I was a little bit at a dead end at Ajax. And uh, he, he managed to convince me to, to come over to England, which was, of course, uh, one of my dreams to play abroad or in England or in Spain. Um, and, and, and yeah, the rest was history. I mean, uh, I never regretted to come to town. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for people that don't remember, Martin, I've, I look back on your career at Ajax today and you played in the Champions League seven times, I think it was. One game against Real Madrid. You was in midfield with Edgar Davids. Uh, Yari Littmanen, in goal was Van der Zaar. You've got the De Boer brothers in there, Mark Overmars, Carnu. It's, <laughs> it's a hell of a lineup, isn't it? To be with those, those players. Those, you said. Those, those guys still call me every week. Do you remember? I you I played with you that game. So uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, that was a hell of a hell of a team. And uh, yeah. uh, look, looking back and hearing all those names. Uh, it wasn't a surprise that I was just on underneath their, their level. Uh, I'm still proud of that as well, of course, that I came yeah. through the youth youth ranks. And actually, at the moment, uh, with one blink of an eye, I'm watching uh, the Ajax game against Benfica at the moment. Okay. Uh, it's still nil-nil. Um, so, um, uh, no, it's a great memories. I mean, I'm still proud of, um, of every club I played for, not only Ipswich, but also Ajax, of course. But that's all. That's already twenty years ago, and and yeah. that time flies. And uh, and at the moment, I'm uh, I'm the head coach of the under 19 of, of Holland, which which is something I'm I'm also very proud of. And um, hopefully, uh, within a few years, you see me at the highest level. Um, but I'm, I'm taking my time. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And is it when? Keep, sorry, Rich. When 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 you kids have an aspiration to play for Ajax. Is it similar to like playing for Man United or Manchester City in England? What what does it kind of mean to Dutch youngsters to, to wear the red and white of Ajax? Well, I remember in our time, we we, we beaten uh, Man City, by the way, uh, twice. <laughs> we, we got them relegated uh, once, by the way. The, I scored also in that in that game. Yeah, yeah. 
uh, I is of course similar as as uh, as Man United, uh, Chelsea, uh, and and Ajax is one of the the biggest clubs in Holland together with Feyenoord and PSV. So you you can compare it with uh, with Man U. I yes, think going, going back to that header you just talked about about Man City, I've got all your goals down in that you scored for town. I think that was your only header, mine, that you scored. A diving yeah. header as well. Yeah, I think it's even with my eyes closed when I, when I scored it. <laughs> it's got so, something nobody, nobody knows. I was, a, I was a quite good header, by the way. I, I had a good timing. But um, so in defensively, when, when the ball was, was in the midfield, I, I could have headed it quite well, but scoring goals, uh, that, that was something different. I scored some goals, not only at, at, at Ipswich, of course, but that's only one, once I've heard. I scored in training some goals with with my head, but uh, <laughs> I scored some goals with my former club, so, uh, but not, not a lot. It was all, mostly it was with my right foot or sometimes with my left foot. But going back to 2000 and obviously Romeo scouted for town, what did you know about Ipswich Town when it was talked about that you were going to come to the club? Yeah, it was especially the, the Dutch history with, with, with Tyson and Muren. And I knew uh, Fabian Wilnes was playing at the moment uh, in the first team. Uh, but apart from that, um, not really. Um, and I knew at that time because I only also spoke to uh, George Burley at that time over the phone. And he actually convinced me uh, to come. But... To be honest with you, with the Scottish accent, uh, accent, I couldn't understand anything about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just said to me something, okay, we need you. And that, uh, that was more than enough for me. And so at first, I came on loan and, um, and I made a great debut, of course. And, and, and really good. in the summer, I, uh, after the promotion, uh, I signed a full contract, which was nice. Uh, yeah. Is it is it is it difficult to to move countries at the drop of a hat, Martin? One minute you're in you're you're playing for Ajax reserves, like you say, you're at home, you've got your home comforts. Next minute you're in the in the UK playing for him. Yeah, right? but if there was no she in between Holland and uh, and England, it was quite close. Uh, yep. So it was not at the end of the world. Uh, and if you are a football player, and, and at that time I was already uh, six seven years professional, you know, at a certain point uh, you have to expand your uh, uh, career and expand your boundaries and of course uh, we've been brought up at school with, with quite a good of English so it's not the, the end of the world uh, if you go to uh, yeah the other side of the world uh, where they uh, speak Chinese yeah, it's quite difficult but um, and, and because of the Dutch people they adapt quite soon we yeah. are more uh, we are travelers uh, we like to uh, learn different cultures we have in holland we have a multicultural uh, environment i think it's pretty similar as in uh, the way yeah. english people are uh, although they are more traditional i think english people uh, they like their traditions and in holland uh, we like our traditions as well but uh, we, we are open-minded so it, it wasn't it wasn't a big case uh, although i came from a big city like amsterdam so that was a bit different living in the countryside uh, but um, yeah, I like the countryside as well. So uh, yeah. Do, so do when you came over, like... was was it just a loan initially, or did you actually was it spoken about if you do well, you, you'll sign in the summer? Because obviously, look, we all helped it do really well. But did it surprise you how well that you really adapted to English football so quickly? Um, well, the problem was in the, in the beginning. I was more, I was more used as a super sub, if you if you remember. Uh, I, yeah. I find it quite annoying uh, looking back, uh, but eventually I felt so at home, also within that squad. You know, uh, it was a good good bunch of players who really appreciated that I was there. So I felt uh, a part of the 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 task to get promoted. Uh, and 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 being coming at the end of the season, I already knew as well that uh, I I, hadn't, I didn't have the privilege to to being in the starting lineup every time. Um, what was the question? <laughs> I forgot the question. <laughs> I said about adapting to English football when it when oh, yeah. you came. Oh, yeah. So so um, 
uh, our main my, my main task was okay uh, get Ipswich promoted and then we take it from there. But I I remember when we have spoken about it that uh, when I came on loan they said okay if if we're gonna get promoted then probably it's gonna be permit, uh, and which eventually uh, happened of course. Yeah, yeah. How how different was George Burley to Van Gaal, Martin? I know Van Gaal was known as the Iron Tulip, wasn't he? I could, I would imagine they had very different managerial styles. Yeah, my, my, but George George was really uh, passionate as well. I felt it from day one, uh, really into the training pitch and always asking the best out of you um, every single day. Uh, that 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 is similar to Van Gaal. Um, he knew the club. He knew every grass inch uh, at the club, not only uh, at the stadium, but also at the training ground. And he was sort of a legend, of course, because he um, he, he played in the UEFA uh, team. Um, so you felt he was a personality. Um, so in, in, in a way, there, there was there was quite similarities in personality, but in the way of styling, the way of playing. That was, of course, uh, a bit, bit different. In Holland, we like to play uh, all in the field. And, and especially when you're playing in England, they like to play over the top. And you have to run sometimes. And you have to run again. Then if you don't run, you have to run again. So that's quite di different uh, as in Holland. So you obviously came in. You had a good start. Then you scored on your debut against Fulham. And then obviously the goal against Charlton. Let's fast forward to them playoff games. You're on the bench at the Reebok Stadium. We're 2-0 down. Uh, Tony Mowbray's off injured. David Johnson's off injured. Off you come, off the bench. I always remember that picture of you on the sideline in your lovely orange shirt, pouring the water over your hair and slicking it back as you come on. And we were 2-0 down. But then, obviously, you, you came on and had a big influence on the second goal, didn't you? Because you you made the assist for Marcus Stewart for his uh, for the equaliser. Yeah, I mean, my Marcus, Marcus, at that time, if you gave him the ball, he, he, he scored. Uh, it was unbelievable. But I remembered as well, because, because we were wearing uh, the reserve shirts were orange. That, that, that was also a bit special uh, for me. And I, I remember it was bloody hot that, that day, I there think. So that's why I put, I put some water over my, uh, over my head, not to be uh, the vain guy, but uh, <laughs> just about, because I was thirsty. Um, you always that, look good. You always look good in the orange. No, no but uh, <laughs> I actually remember the, the the second game, of course, at home uh, against Bolton. That was one of the the most bizarre, craziest evening ever in 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 the games I played for. Um, but I, I mean, I, I didn't even remember when, when you were saying I was staying at the line and, and put some water over my over my head. Uh, I was really thirsty uh, that, that day. Barry oh, Knight, what's your thoughts of Barry Knight? Because he um, had a major right influence, mouth. didn't he, on that second leg? The referee in the second leg. Oh, I think he, he did a hell of a job. That he. <laughs> <laughs> we all agree. He's never forgiven us, Martin. Never no. Never forgiven us. no. <laughs> I, I remember there was a lot, a lot of argument with with the uh, with the Bolton players, but because they, because the referee, I think he in general he, he did a, quite a good job, but they let them influence uh, by by a referee, and 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 that was the good thing about us. We had our minds set on um, on that final at Wembley, and and we showed it as well, and. I remember because that's quite a good story that my brother-in-law he was over uh, for his, for the first time and as he saw Jim Gilton of course scoring three goals <laughs> and he said listen this guy is going to score in the next few years 40 goals or more and I thought, <laughs> okay, we never scored a goal anymore <laughs> but, uh, no, but it was like I think the Bolton players uh, let themselves out of out of the game, you know, they played themselves yeah. out of the game, and we stayed into it. And uh, of course, we were lucky at the, in the last minute that Jim scored that goal. Also, I know that fantastic uh, flick on from uh, Tony Mumre on his age. Um, the East Anglian news uh, could have been on his feet uh, just about, but um, <laughs> yeah, uh, he did great. Tony was a good guy. 
I, I won't ask if you've been involved in a game like that before because I don't say you ever have done. But have you watched it back at all? That the, the playoff run. Have you have you ever looked at it back? No, not 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 really, not really. I'm not not really a guy who looks back at um, at games. Of course, you see sometimes you see once once a year uh, on 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 the Twitter or whatever the, those pictures are coming by. But but that's in the past, and I rather live in the future. Um, yeah, nice. I like that. Hey, Martin, what I've always wanted to know because I was watching that first leg on Sky, almost in tears. We're two 0 down. The Wembley dream is is slipping away. How how did you as a group of players, how did you, when there's such a huge prize at stake, how did you keep yourselves calm to get back in the game and not not panic at 2-0 down? I think probably that's why you are a supporter and we are a yeah, professional football absolutely. player. To stay, to stay, <laughs> to stay calm uh, at, the, at the right moments and to be focused and uh, to be in, into the game. And of course, uh, during my career, I had my nervous uh, breakdowns, uh, but I've been saying that for uh, so many years. So we had such a good team who, who believed in every single uh, piece of that team, uh, not only on the pitch, but, but also I, w- I was part of the pitch. Um, so I felt a part of, of, of a big uh, team, uh, not only the first 11 players, there was a group of 22, I think, and, and also with the staff. And also with the supporters who gave us a lift every every game, so it, it was just like uh, no 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 question that we uh, question mark that we we were to get a result over there and and also the next game and also in the final. Yeah. So put, put, I'm trying to put myself in your shoes. The 119th minute and Richard Naylor plays you through North Stand End. You're running through. Take take us back to. To that goal, the, the, in the semis, you mean? Yeah, the semi-finals, yeah. The, the winning goal. Uh, yeah, I mean, Richard was a, was a great player to play with. He was a link, a link player. You you can play him in, and then then you can run uh, towards him, uh, next to him. He always held the ball quite well, and I, and I was more like a, at Ajax. We we had also had a striker, and I was just the, the number ten on the on the beneath those players. So I. I was used to play with a striker who who lays it up to me, so uh, so Richard was uh, sort of that kind of striker. So um, I knew, yeah, as soon as he was getting the ball, he was holding it. He was quite a muscled guy, so I had to wait for the for uh, not being offside. I think I was standing on the on the halfway line, and then uh, and I wasn't the fastest fastest, but I was like running at the right uh, moment. Uh, and as soon uh, well, it was the same as in the, in the final. As soon as I was going on that goal, I knew I was going to score. Uh, sometimes in, in your career, you have those moments where everything it falls your your way. Um, and sometimes, uh, yeah, you have you have moments in your career when when everything you touch uh, it goes next to the post, or uh, <laughs> yeah. you you feel you feel dreadful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who were your sort of big friends at the club, mine? He, uh, presumably, Fabian welcomed you into the club, did he, as a, as a fellow country? Yeah, player. Fabian was a big help, and and, and Marco Holst, Holster, there was also yeah. a Dutch guy. He was yeah. there, uh, but he was he didn't play an awful lot anymore. But he yeah. helped me a lot. But also the, the English guy Tony Tony Mumre uh, he, he invited me over to his house uh, to watch uh, a Champions League game. So, but also within the club. Uh, there were there were some people uh, at administration, but also the the the, the, the supposed people who are who are getting your tickets. Uh, they were so friendly, um, so I had no uh, enemies over there. I mean, everyone felt felt let me felt at home. Yeah, Tony Mowbray's having a good season with Blackburn at the moment. Could take them to the Premier League. Yeah, they just, they just both over there just put a Dutch guy on loan. Uh, the right okay. uh, fullback. Um, I don't know his name, but uh, anyway, it's he's, he's looking. F- it's looking good to to get promoted. I think he's third, third or fourth in the in championship, something like that. Yeah, they don't. They don't Hopefully, they don't. Uh, he get promoted, and also Mark Venus is his assistant. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, was was a, he, he was a big character, wasn't he, Venus? Yeah, typical. Um, English, English, uh, English player <laughs> like to play hard. And, 
<laughs> I was so surprised um, because at, at that time he was, I think he was 37 or so. But, uh, and he wasn't training always. He was like managing to get it all, <laughs> all together to play on the Saturdays. But yeah. I mean, uh, when, when he when he was playing, he was he was kicking people about like uh, for fun, you know. So uh, it was, yeah. was quite interesting. He took very hard free kicks, didn't he? Though? Like bullets. Yeah, yeah, well, like bullets, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, 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 great guy, great guy. Yeah. So yes. when Wembley two thousand, obviously, um, you you were, you were expecting to play, I suppose, weren't you? Because obviously James Cocroft got injured in the semi final. How did you take that disappointment when George named the lineup and you're on the substitutes bench? Uh, I, I take it up the chin. Is that a, is that the English? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> so, well, I was I was really disappointed because I I remember that I I brought in uh, thirty people from Holland. All right. Uh, yeah. And I, I I said to them, listen, I'm gonna play. Um. Did they all have the t-shirts? Did they all have the t-shirts yeah. in the stand? I, I still wear it as a pyjama. I still have it. <laughs> yeah, wow. But, uh, it's not a joke, but I still use it. Um, no, I, I was, I have to say, I was really disappointed because I, I, I felt I had something. Uh, I knew I was going to score. I knew I was going to score. And I knew I was going to play. So um, I think for for an hour or so, I, uh, I was in my room and I was angry at George. But then eventually uh, you have to... Yeah, pick you up yourself together again, and I said, "Okay, it's not about me; it's about the the team and about getting promoted." And um, but I remember fifteen like then. I don't know what time did I came on. Do you remember? I think fifteen minutes. About seventy-five minutes. I think you came on. Yeah. yeah. But I I remembered I I I tapped uh, George on the shoulder, and I said, "Okay, listen, you have to put me on." And then he said to me, "Okay, uh, have have a have a warm up," and then uh, and then he put me on. Unbelievable! But but, but you knew you were going to score. You were that confident yeah. that you were. Yeah, I was. I was so so confident I was going to score. And that's what I mean. Sometimes in your career, you feel like you're 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 a god, or you you feel great. Uh, just like Ronaldo does his whole his whole career, <laughs> and I only added added, added spells uh, spells of, of things in my career because I also I also had a spell at Ipswich in the Premier League where I didn't play an awful lot because he left me out or or I wasn't playing that well. Um, but sometimes you have that feeling within your career uh, that everything is is going your way. And yeah. even when I, of course, when I, when I, he left me on the bench, I, I, eventually uh, I, I said to myself after that hour, okay, when I come on, I'm going to score the winner. Was that, hard to deal, was that hard to deal with, Martin? Because you, you got that tag of a little bit of a super sub, didn't you? Like you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was because in the, in, the, in, the, in the championship and at that time, it, I think it was first division. Um uh, when I came on, uh, I scored. I scored the goals, and, and then George said in an interview after a game, yeah, he sort of a super sub, and then and then it it, it took it. They, they took it from there, and and I proved every time. Okay, when I came on, I, I made an impact. So so it was a fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, yeah, a self fulfilling uh, prophecy. If I'm yeah. if I'm saying it right. Um, so I, w- I was I was. A bit fed up at a certain moment, but yeah. If I could, well, I was looking down here, Matt. I would wrote it down. Your first start in the Premier League wasn't until sort of later in the season. You scored the two goals against Bradford, yeah. and then you went on a run. You played eleven consecutive games, yeah. and you only started thirteen games in that season. And you had thirteen sub appearances, so it took you till sort of February March time to sort of break through into the first team there and had a, had a run of games. Then you showed what you could do because you scored six goals. No, but I think I think I made my first start not not in uh, January March, but I made it at the end of December, I think. Yeah, against you played against Spurs, didn't you? The game yeah. that was on the TV. Oh yeah, the freezing cold game that was. Yeah, I remember that. that yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but yeah, it, it took me quite a long, long time, um, and and also because the team was playing quite good and they were solid and he was more uh, looking for, I think, more solid plays instead of uh, 
some creative players. Um, it, it took me quite a while, yeah. But uh, as soon as I came in the team, uh, I did quite well. And, yeah. and Jamie, Jamie Clapham was, was at my place uh, before uh, Christmas and, and I took his place after Christmas. Which was quite uh, personally, uh, I felt Jamie was uh, one of the nicest teammates I ever had. He was a really friendly, guy, friendly guy. Mm. I felt sorry uh, for him, but um, yeah, luckily it, uh, I w- it felt good for me. Yeah, absolutely. What, what was what was the goal at the start of the, at Premier League season, Ryan? Because like we shocked the world, didn't we, finishing fifth in the Premier League? But did, was it just momentum that caused that? Was it team spirit? What was that secret ingredient that saw Ipswich finish? In the European spots. Great question. Yeah, it was a combination of, of team spirit, but also good players. I remember uh, Titus Bremble came uh, out of the youth uh, youth ranks, who did pretty well. Uh, everyone had something to prove. Uh, Mark Stewart was the, also scoring on the highest level. Uh, everyone uh, knew wanted to prove something, and, and George as well, because George Burley, I think, eventually uh, the. Uh, that was his first Premier League uh, debut as well, I think. Uh, so everyone had to prove something. And also the the, the squad and, and the people into town, they lift us, of course. So everything uh, felt our way, but it was more like uh, team effort in combination with uh, people wanting to prove themselves. Yeah, absolutely. And Herman Horidison was a big signing as well. Yeah. Titus. Yeah, literally and figuratively, he was a big <laughs> signing. And <laughs> big dressing room character, yeah. I mean, it, I, mean I, 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 I never met an, uh, an Icelandic guy, but uh, yeah, he could, he could eat everything, uh, his, <laughs> like a, a meat like that, but also his opponent. Uh, <laughs> now he's like a really, uh. How do you say the natural born man, you know, like yeah, uh, yeah, course, N- yeah. Norman? Uh, we'll go yeah, yes, Viking. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was the game against Bradford when you scored two goals. Do you remember him jumping into the North Stand? Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember <laughs> that. Uh, got quite a culture uh, <laughs> a photograph, I think, when he jumped yeah, in. Yeah, really, right, yeah. yeah, and it wasn't his goal, Matt. No, disappointed no. They gave it to Mark no. Virtual. Yeah, yeah right. just flicked off his yeah. head, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> What a season. What a time. I'm so starstruck. I've got to be honest, I'm so starstruck here. I'm, I'm thinking of questions and I'm just like... But you two well, are doing a no, going, back, going back to the Wembley game, mine, was it a dream of yours, a boyhood dream of yours to score at Wembley? Would you practice yeah, yeah. in the street back in Amsterdam pretending you was at Wembley Stadium? Yeah, I mean, of course. And, and I also remember that uh, that game... Should have been the last game ever played on yeah. on the you know, on the Wembley pitch. So That's I was right. like, I'm yeah. the last man on this earth who scores in the stadium. <laughs> yeah. The Dutch guy, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then eventually, I think Chelsea played the Charity Shield, and uh, it oh, was nil yeah. nil. Uh, or a Germany was playing against England. Germany, England in the rain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was nil yeah. nil at the end, and then the uh, German guy scored, and then. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm still the last Dutch guy who scores on this, on this Absolutely. Yeah. And, then, and then Hetzelbank scored, and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> and we are, oh, yeah. we are one of about six teams in England who've still not played at the new Wembley. We're still really? waiting to get there. Not been no. And is no, Ipswich one of them? No. Yeah, still yeah. waiting. We've not played, played at Wembley. Wembley. You scored back now. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, we can True. get there one day. True. <laughs> but what are your sort of memories of? Uh, Europe with Ipswich. So, so we go on this European journey, don't we? UEFA Cup. I know you played in a, a couple of the games. As fans, yeah. we were so excited, Martin, because it felt like, you know, we look back to Muren and Tyson and the 81 team yeah. that won the UEFA Cup and suddenly we're, we're there again against all the odds. I mean, yeah. European uh, football. I think, I think we played also against some some nice teams like Inter Milan, of course, that we played at home. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Remember uh, Sixto Peralta, the, the Argentinian yeah. was there. I think he scored in that game. So, uh, to be honest, it was nice to play, but it it wasn't the best games we played over there. It wasn't. It yeah. was. It was a little bit also against uh, a Scandinavian team, uh, Helsingborg. Was Helsingborg that, yeah, that was an awful game. I think both both games, yeah. but that has also something to do with uh, the opponent. Because Scandinavian uh, teams are very uh, solid and uh, not really attractive. 
because I remember that was for and and, and during those games uh, sometimes I was some injury I had some injury so I couldn't really perform on that level. Um, but I was it was a, a yeah great bonus for the year before that. But eventually uh, we got relegated, of course, also in that year. So that was yeah. uh, pretty strange. What, do, you, do you think, looking back now, do you, do you think that played a part? Of, like getting in Europe, we have, obviously had to, didn't have the biggest squad, had to play on a Sunday. Also, we obviously lost Richard Wright, went to Arsenal. James Scowcroft went to Leicester and we signed Matteo Serrini and we signed Fanidi George. Obviously, we had a good dressing room the year before where we we done really well. What was the dynamic like when the new signings came in? Yeah, it was, it was different. It was, uh, it was very different. I mean, I think they'd just been signed in the last, the week before uh, the Premier League started. And uh, I think also Ulrich, uh, Ulrich Le Pen, uh, yeah, they, yeah. they signed yeah. him well, and he hardly played. So, yeah, the... the, the uh, they weren't the luckiest signings, if I uh, if I say it uh, lightly, um, and that that did something to to the squad, of course. But um, yeah, eventually we we came uh, two or three points short of, of yeah. staying staying up. So it's at at the top. It's 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 all about uh, little little oh thing, little things in a chain. And if yeah. that chain has been broken or, or interrupted, then yeah. it's very difficult to change that again during the season. Yeah, absolutely. Was, uh, Fanidi was someone you knew from Ajax, presumably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Was he a good guy? Yeah, very good guy. He was a very good guy. But, uh, yeah, you know, fortunately, uh, he went to Spain and he played there for, for years and years and years. And in Spain, they, they, they play a different kind of football. Yeah, of and, course, and, yeah, and the, yeah. the tempo was a little bit slower as well, and 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 he wasn't getting younger as well. So he was. How he old was, was he? How old, someone in the chat hey, earlier, Martin said, "How old was Fanidi George?" Every time I've got a question, someone asks. Yeah. Was, he <laughs> older than he really, was he older than he said, Martin? <laughs> I don't know. I can't, I can't really <laughs> answer it. Really he knows. Out of way, does he know how? Does he know how old Finney actually is? And many people have asked that question, <laughs> uh, like, Martin. It's, he, it's I liked. To... I liked Finney. He was. So did I. Had some great. He scored great goals. That debut against that Derby. Debut. Yeah. No, but uh, listen, Finney could have could have played a part, but because he was brought in a few days before uh, the first Premier League game and. He had to adapt also to the to the system and to the to the tempo, uh, and I was just mentioning Ronaldo. Uh, yeah, if if you're good enough, you're good enough. You know, it has to do anything about your age. And I think in general um, they wanted to get him fitter, uh, but I think he was fit enough. Only he wasn't used uh, quite good enough. You know, he's, uh, if you bring bring him in. You can't uh, change him in the way he he's been playing because he's, he's on his age. You have to use him in in, in, in a good manner. Yeah, yeah. Because he also yeah. suffered an injury, didn't he? I don't know if you remember, um, Matt. He broke oh, his jaw at Fulham. Time. That wasn't yeah. Fulham, many Fulham, games yeah. into the season, but he look, no. he did play a part. He scored a great goal against Sunderland at Portman Road. If you remember that goal, Martin, yeah. when he was right out on the right touch line and he's lifted it over the goal he's had from about 35 yeah. yards, you know. Yeah, wow, yeah. He, he, could, he could definitely play football and, and he showed that in uh, before uh, his time at Ipswich. Uh, but once again, it was a combination of uh, not being used in a proper way and, and, and also not uh, really gelling together overall in that team and, and, and it didn't help him as well. But he was yeah, great. Yeah. He was a really great guy, really great. When you, when you talk about sort of dressing room dynamics, Martin, in terms of new players coming in, is it is that sort of manifested in it's not as chatty, you haven't got the same team spirit? I mean, how does that sort of bear itself out? Yeah, there's, there's also something to do. If, if you bring new players in, then 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 let's say uh, three guys have to leave the, the starting lineup. Yeah. And and, and, and and if you have a great pre-season, I think we, we had a great pre-season, only... The last game of uh, before preseason, we played at home against PSV Eindhoven, and we got hammered by uh, three yeah. or four nil in yeah. preseason. Yeah. Uh, then, then, uh, then everything changes from there. The, the new players came in. Uh, we we couldn't play football anymore, uh, but 
I think that it was it was a general uh, lose against a very good opponent because yeah. I think Ruth Nistroy was playing there. Uh, Andre Oyer, there was there was a big yeah. big bunch of very good players in, against PSV. So I remember that game. Eric Geretz was the manager, wasn't he? The Belgian yeah, defender. Yeah, Geretz was, yeah, yeah, yeah. was, was a manager. And uh, yeah, well. yeah, it was really uh, Alex, the, 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 the right centre back. Uh, he was a Brazilian uh, yeah. national team player. So, um, Did he only play for Chelsea? Did he go to yeah. Chelsea? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Alex. and and uh, the goalkeeper played at Watford, uh, the Brazilian guy. Uh, anyway, it was hell, it was hell of a team, and it was not, uh, it's not. It wasn't the end of the world uh, that we lost that game, but uh, according to George, uh, we like had to get, yeah, we have to bring in the new players. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned him earlier, Sixto Peralta. What kind of player was he? Obviously, he came in on loan from Inter Milan, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you, yeah, really. Uh, uh, handy on the ball, uh, like tick, 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 you know, like uh, like a little rat or like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe uh, I don't want to pronounce it badly, but you know what I mean. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, very handy on the ball. Uh, good, good eye for uh, spaces in front of him. Uh, like to work really hard, like most uh, Argentinian uh, does. You know. Uh, uh, I think he had a, had a good year uh, that year. Uh, yeah, he was popular. Yeah, popular with yeah, the fans like yourself. Yeah, absolutely. He only played for a year or so. At, at yeah. The... So obviously we got relegated and then the next season, um, I think it was in about October, September, October, we haven't had the greatest start and George gets to sack nine. How, how did you, you take that as a, as a group when he went? Yeah, that was, that, that was an end of, uh, of, a, of an era. Uh, because he did, he did, of course, well. I don't know uh, how many years he, he was a coach before he got sacked. Do you know uh, how many years he? Uh... It must have been about. Uh, I think he came about ninety. When we got relegated in ninety five, he came in, didn't he? That season. Yeah, so yeah, ninety four, ninety five. Seven, seven years, seven years, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, seven years. So for for a manager nowadays, that's, that's quite a good yeah. uh, years to be a manager. So. Uh, and at a certain point, you you felt there was no uh, way back for him. Uh, you felt that you know uh, there was no uh, team spirit. The team spirit was bad, and uh, we were losing games. So uh, then, ninety nine out of the hundred times, uh, the, the manager goes, and uh, that's mm. that's part of the being a professional football player. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And it must be difficult for players. Sunny being in that, you know, the, the spotlight of the world is on you playing in the Premier League. You're at Anfield, Old Trafford. Then you start the season at Walsall. It's a big come down, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, a nice little stadium, by the way, also. <laughs> Best Scott Stadium. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's a different mindset, I guess, you have to get into. You've gone from the very top to back where we started from. Yeah, but I never had the feeling that that, that was something uh, living within that group. We, we I think, uh, after a year, uh, Matt Holland left, uh, Horizon left. Um, so we we had a little bit of a setback in quality, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think after George uh, Joe Roll uh, came in, I think. Yep, that's it. I, re I really liked him as a as a person, a great guy. Um, but you see how difficult it is to if you got relegated. Looking look look at all those teams who are playing in the championship and in first division. Yeah. There, there are teams there who are big big teams. Uh, Nottingham Forest, for instance, uh, yeah. how long have been there uh, in, yes. in those regions? It's, so it's, it's so difficult um, to get back. I suppose so, back then, though. Obviously, we were the first team, Martin, to go into administration when we got relegated and obviously got into financial difficulties. If you think now, when you get relegated now, if you finish bottom of the premiership, you get so much money, don't you? And yeah. it's always, when you look at the championship, there's normally the teams who get relegated are probably the teams who are going to go back up, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I haven't really got uh, the stats but, uh, about that, but... Uh... I'm not sure whether that's the case. Is that is that true? That if you yeah, I think a lot, you look at Norwich for example. That they're, they're a bit of a, they're a yo-yo team, aren't they? They're, this season, obviously, bottom of the Premier League. Yeah. If you probably look next year, they'll probably be up the top end, and it's because they've got 
they've the got parachute. their cash that they're coming down with, I think. Mm. Yeah. Uh, who's now on, on the top of the league of the championship? Uh, Fulham at top, and you've got uh, Bournemouth. 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 Second. Bournemouth. And they've Bournemouth. obviously been down a couple of seasons, but they've still got them parachute payments where... Yeah, of course. Uh, no, those, 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 those amounts of money the, the, the clubs are getting, yeah, that, that, that you can push back right, right away. Uh, so so that's, yeah, that, that helps a lot. Um, but... That's nowadays the the big big money uh, venue, you know. The big money uh, is there, and and in a way, it's good they have a parachute. But maybe they should give a little bit more to uh, the yeah. other clubs. Well, give it to you, us. You, you mentioned money then, obviously the, the setback in quality, Martin. And Louis 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 asks if Joe Raw had money to spend, do you think we would have got promoted? Uh, Joe Joe Raw. Yeah, he had like a budget, a transfer budget, because everyone he bought in was kind of free transfers. Never, or even just I keeping never... hold of players instead of let, you know letting the quality decrease. Yeah, but I never thought about that question. But yeah, maybe, maybe. But eventually, you can't stop uh, that players uh, want to play on the highest level. So, sure. so I think for Matt, Matt Holland, there was there was no way back, and for Herman also not. And I, and I could have I could have left also uh, that summer, but I got injured, and I decided to stay. Uh, we could, Martin, we couldn't have coped if you'd left and Matt Holland had left at the same time. We would never have coped. God, no. Matty H. Matty H, yeah. Okay. Is it, what kind of guy was he? Yeah, he was a really good professional, uh, great leader, uh, good good, um, good captain, uh, leading by example, uh, never stopped running. Uh, so overall, he was um, a real... Um, uh, how do you say that? Uh, president for the club, or like an yeah. ambassador, ambassador for for the club, and he still is. He still is because I, is. I saw I saw him the other day, and I think he's now is he, doing. Does he use the same television. moisturizer, Martin, as you use? Because he's Mark, Matt Holland still looks. We have, like we have, the, we have both the, the same secret that we don't tell <laughs> anyone. <laughs> Brilliant. We've, We've got, got to go question. to the questions because we've got yeah, ab- a few off soon. Absolutely. We've got Matt Stannard. Yeah. After, we, after we, we won at Wembley, after the game, what did you players get up to? I can't remember anymore. <laughs> yes, you can look at that smile. Oh, really yeah. no, I think we had a few drinks and we went, of course, with the bus. We went back to Ipswich and uh, we were... Uh, yeah, we were doing something in some tents and we had a drink. Uh, I think you went to the we, Suffolk Showground, Martin. That's where yeah, you ended up. Yeah, the Suffolk yeah. Showground. Uh, and I think the next day we had a hop on, a hop off uh, bus uh, trip oh, yeah. Yeah. into town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it was a better better uh, afternoon than, than the day uh, when we won the, the, yeah. the, the Wembley game. Yeah. Uh, Mike D, other than the playoff goal, what's your favourite town goal, Martin? For me personally? Or for you personally, general? yeah. For you personally. Uh, yeah, because I think the, the semi-final goal against Bolton... Uh, I've got the list here of all your Yeah, no, no, I can't read it. <laughs> I can't read it. Uh, no, I think I scored a goal so also at the, at the sideline where I... Played it in once uh, over the keeper. I think it was against Crew. Was it against Crew? I was going to talk to you about that game because Martin said earlier about the five-three Bolton game. That Crew game, it was six-four. Six and I game. think that did you mean it because it looked like a cross? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I often think back to that game. That was an unbelievable game. Okay. Six-four. Yeah. It was good, but but I, I, I don't remember anything uh, out of it anymore because the Bolton game was much more special and also the Both. atmosphere and, 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 and the temperature, temperature of the of the, um, yeah, the normal temperature. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I don't remember anything about crew uh, game. Uh, Mark Tuxford, who was the best Ipswich player you played with during your time? Uh, I was always a big fan of Jim, Jim Gilton. Because of his vision, his technical skills, he was a little bit uh, uh, complicated in his head. He was very aggressive, uh, <laughs> but which I really liked. Uh, and and eventually Tony Mombray was was 
It's also a very, uh, very good player for me. He was, he wasn't the fastest, but so clever in solutions making on the pitch and, uh, yeah. and, and a, a really leader, social leader. You know, he was, he was, he was, he was, he was a really uh, big man in the dressing room, but on a, on a really nice way. Always really respectful to everyone. Um, and I think Fabian Fabian Wilnis was really a good player because I I didn't really knew him as a player in Holland, but the, the things he done, uh, well, what he has done for Ipswich is, is, is really amazing, and especially as a defender, I I I think he he got beaten two or three times during his career uh, one on one, and and the rest he was always intercepting uh, the one on one. Which was, I think he was under underrated. Yeah, yeah, and got that great goal against Manchester United. He did. Yes, great scenes. Do you still do you still speak to? Are you still in contact with him? Mike? I also spoke to him today. Uh, that uh, why <laughs> why weren't you there uh, this weekend? Uh, but he had Corona. He was uh, he was oh. in, in he had, uh, Corona. Oh no! Yeah, wish him well for us. Absolutely, wish him well. please do. Uh, obviously, you know. Um, We've had a great affinity with Dutch players over the years as a football club. Roy asks in the chat earlier in the show, any players that we should we could maybe keep an eye on, look to bring across? I know you mentioned earlier in the show you could help the club any way you could. Is anyone yeah, at the moment? Once again, I've spoken to some, some people in Ipswich this weekend, uh, which, which uh, enthusiastic me again about maybe uh, helping Ipswich back... Uh, with some good players and of course we have uh, Ipswich uh, town and in Holland we have a, a good relationship with each other and um, the last few years uh, I don't know if there has any been Dutch players uh, being involved in Ipswich uh, squad uh, I don't know no so maybe maybe we should try to um, to work that out again uh, because in general good idea. Uh, Dutch players are uh, technical very well and it shoots the Ipswich Town uh, game uh, yeah. but, but also they're, they're, they're in general they are, are in, in wages they, they, they're a little bit more they're less expensive mm. um, so maybe in the future we, we can work something out but uh, and, and of course I, I mentioned that earlier uh, I'm the under 19 uh, head coach of Holland so I see a lot of players Passing by not only in Holland but also uh, we play against Germany and France this coming weekend. So uh, you never know what happens uh, to get a good tip or whatever. Um, Absolutely. You are you enjoying the coaching at that level, the development team level? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's it's, it's getting serious every uh, more serious every year. Um, but um, yeah, I never expected myself to be a coach. Of course, I was moaning about my managers that were so poorly. Uh, so so uh, now I have to prove it by myself. Now, yeah. okay, the thing is, because because I was a, quite a difficult guy, uh, not only for the managers, but also for myself, uh, and, and getting a little bit older, putting all this together and, and, and making making it work. Uh, I mean, I, I worked on the, on the highest level. I worked on the lowest level. I won the Champions League. I got relegated, so I've got everything in my uh, yeah. my back to give them um, uh, uh, my experience back to the guys, and and not all not only because um, I saw Maradona one day doing his documentary where where he was talking about himself for thirty minutes. Like I'm, I'm more like a guy who who like to uh, talk to the guys and give them experience, and yeah. then train yeah. on it, and then work on it, and develop quite a Quite a good team. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good Tough. question, then, Martin. From Paul, from Paul P. Martin, uh, what was Dale Roberts' influence at the club? His illness, death, really seemed to leave George Burley struggling. I remember the day that George um, found out that that one of his best friends, also his assistant Dale, he's, he's, he's his assistant manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no. Um, so. Um, he was the assistant manager, but also a friend of George. Of course. Uh, and I remember the first time he, um, he he heard that he was sick. He was really devastated about it. Yeah. yeah. I can't really judge about it whether he was, uh, if that was an impact. Uh, for me personally, it wasn't. But it was, uh, at that time, it was a big blow for, for George. Uh, yeah. But 
I, I, I didn't yeah. have the feeling that it was a part of uh, the problem. Yeah, what, yeah. what was he like? What influence did he have on the team? Obviously, he was there when we won at Wembley, wasn't he? So, yeah, he was. I mean, of course, if if you are an assistant coach, and I mean, uh, I, I I'm a head coach now, but also sometimes I'm an assistant coach. It's good. It's you know how important it is to to be a good assistant coach who who brings you in different ideas to give you certain different opinions uh, and to trust the assistant coach. Uh, that's very important. And I think uh, George uh, trusted him. Of course, they were big friends from the youth. And, 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 and so it it's also has something to do with trust. Uh, so in general, he, he they were working pretty good together. Um, so he had, a, he had a positive influence in the dressing room, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, was that 1988 Dutch team a real inspiration for you, Martin, growing up as a, a teenager? Because of when you won the Euros, of course, Arnold Muren, Ipswich Town legend, was in, was in that team with Bullet and Van Basten and all the rest. So, what was the question? When the, when, when the Netherlands won the Euros in yeah. 1988, we obviously had yeah. Arnold Muren was in that yeah. team. Yeah. Was that a big inspiration for you as a, as a teenager? Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, Marco from Basten, I always tried to uh, to finish like him. You know, I uh, went on the on, on the little squares and you know, on the streets and tried to <laughs> try to sort it out what he was doing. I never managed, by the way. But now, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, of course, I mean, looking looking at your 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 heroes, uh, and you try to adapt and you try to learn from them and you try to. Uh, Copy, copy the things from from them. Um, of course, it was it was a great team, and um, I remember Marco van Basten was one of my favorite players, and uh, by Arno Muren uh, also at that time. But I think I, I, at that time I didn't knew he was playing for Ipswich. You remember? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Does he yeah. still have a big? Does he still have a big legacy in, in the Netherlands? Muren is he still fondly remembered? Yeah, but he's, he's just he's a quiet guy, and he yeah. lives in, in the Volendam, and that's that's a, a little town, and it seems like he never comes out of that little town. Uh, okay. yeah. So I, I don't see him quite uh, quite a lot. Um, um, so he's, he's a quiet guy, so you don't yeah. see him. Anymore. Did he's talking on the pitch? <laughs> yeah, 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 especially with his feet. Yeah, absolutely. What's the um, expectation for Holland uh, at the World Cup? Because obviously. Um, Van Gaal's back in charge, isn't he? Yeah, and uh, nowadays uh, sometimes I help him as well as uh, scouting. I do some scouting for him. Uh, tomorrow we have a meeting again, so uh, if I give him good advice, I think there's only one way, and that's World, World Cup winners. Uh, <laughs> no, that's, that's not true. I mean, we, we have a bunch of good players, um, but also some players who can maybe play a little bit high, on a higher higher level. And if I compare the other teams at the moment, uh, I think they're a little bit further. But Louis van Gaal is a great coach. He's an experienced coach. And um, he's been saying that for years and years already that this is his last task. Uh, and he's definitely saying now it's his last task. Uh, so I think there's only one thing he wants, and that's uh, try to be the World Cup winner. But it's going to be tough. It's going to be very hard, and everything must suit very well. And all the little things will decide uh, whether you go to uh, to win to win it all the way. Yeah, uh, Tim Tim Morden, uh, Burley loved the four four two and three five two. The game has evolved since then. Obviously, you've got you know expected goals now, you know assists, pre assists. Don't start me. How does Martin view the modern game today? Is it really that different to when you played? Well, in, in general. I mean, that's the way I look at it. You don't speak really in systems anymore. You you, you speak in, in uh, opportunities uh, from your own team. So you have your principles, you know, and, and, and it doesn't really matter what kind of uh, system you play. You play from, from out of your principles. And uh, I mean, a good a good example, of course, is, is Man, Man City. Of course, they play in general 4-3-3. But if you look at them on the pitch, they move around all over the pitch and and sometimes uh, the brown is on the right hand side and i mean every player plays sometimes different on a different position even so um i'm also more of a of a manager who doesn't think in in system of course your starting your starting point is 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 a certain 
um, system, but then you they have the freedom to to go everywhere and. Yeah, that's that's a little bit different nowadays. And of course, in stamina, uh, everything is being measured with with computers, and and and, and they've got their, their things on. You know, uh, how do you call it in English? The, the measure uh, oh, jacket. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the vests. Um, mm. Yeah, so 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 they are top athletes, and and uh, yeah. compared to my time, uh, I remember sometimes we went out uh, for a little beer. Um, yeah. And, and nowadays, nowadays that, that that isn't possible anymore from my point of view. Yeah, it's interesting. You, you said there, Martin, about formations. Obviously, it was the Dutch who they invented total football, didn't they? They did. Yeah, um, of course. Uh, Michels, Michels was one of the. Uh, yeah, he was one good. of the, the inventors. Uh, but but once again, what is total football? You know, that's that's a big word. And <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and uh, total football. Uh, got so many different layers but if you say total football is attacking football uh people you want to press forward and 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 and, and those principles if you got it right uh that's what i mean it doesn't really matter what kind of system you play if you have those principles uh, uh top notch and spot on then then it doesn't really matter what kind of system you have if, if your principle are right then then yeah, yeah you get you get a long way Absolutely. I think we we're should, out of time. Uh, I was going to say, as you got to meet Louis van Gaal, Martin, we best let you go. Yeah. <laughs> I've just got one last question. We asked all our guests. Jaffa cake, cake or biscuit? <laughs> Do you remember Jaffa cakes in the UK? <laughs> I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> No worries. There you no go. Worries. You're, but the fisherman, you didn't get an answer to your question. There we go. We're out of time, though, but... I've, I've been Great starstruck stuff. for the last hour. I okay, well, it was nice to speak to you and uh, yeah, good good luck to all uh, all of you there in uh, Deep Switch and also with the fans, of course. Hope to see you, uh, see you yeah, soon. And I'm going to watch the, the second half of Ajax now. Uh, so uh, Thanks for the shirt. Uh, <laughs> always thanks so much. Um, enjoy. Thank thanks, you. Brian. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, okay. Thank you for, for watching at home. Hit the subscribe button if you're new. This is the unfiltered platform for Trish Town fans. Uh, we give you I've, the got, I've got my next stage. guest lined up. I'm going to be on to Martin. Um, Romeo Zondervan. Yeah. Come on. What is, what, oh, do you know what? I've never been, I've never been so starstruck I think, in all of my life. Um, He's so suave. And look, yeah, suave. I think we all like that Dutch player, don't we? we we'd love a, I'd love a Dutch player at town. I think with the way we play Martin and Matt as well at the minute, I think they'd really fit in, wouldn't they? I think as town fans, it's 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 ingrained into into it's us. Style. Part of our heritage, our tradition. You know, we, the Dutch connection. We we cr and the way they play is very much the town way of playing, yeah. Yeah. Um, which is why it moulds and fits so well. Just a top show. Thoroughly enjoyed listening to him, and as you say, he could be a 007 agent. You know, he's just so suave, just you know, <laughs> shaken, not stirred. You know, there's a vacancy there, isn't there, for the new James Bond? Apparently, there is. Well, there you go, Martin. If it doesn't James Van Bond <laughs> doesn't work out with the uh, the Dutch team, can always go and be James, yeah, yeah. James Bond. We're done. Um, we're Thanks, back, Thanks back for watching, week. but yeah, cheers for watching. Hit subscribe, tell all your friends about us. Um, and we'll be back later on in, in the week. I'll, I'll leave you with with, with, with a Russo goal or, or two. Flying Dutch ball in stoppage time.